A PNP is a pediatric nurse practitioner. We can diagnose, treat, prescribe, just like a doctor would, but with the touch of a nurse. Kids A to C with the PNPs. X is for x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, and ultrasounds. Hi everyone, welcome back to Kids A to Z with the PMPs, where each week we take a closer look at some of the common health problems affecting our kids. And we're your hosts, I'm Courtney. And I'm Dominique. What are we talking about today? Today is the letter X, so we are talking about x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, and ultrasounds, yeah. which are all diagnostic studies and tests that we perform here at the hospital. So the use of these tests is really helpful to us as providers because it can help us make um, diagnosing and practicing uh, medicine uh, a lot easier. So we can actually take a look at what's going on inside of our bodies while they're still running in a minimally invasive way. So we'll start with x-rays. X-rays are actually a type of radiation that uses electromagnetic waves to see through an opaque object. And a funny story, the physicist that discovered this long ago, when he realized that he could see through objects, he didn't know what it was. And so in math or science, when we don't know what something is, we use the letter X. So for example, like solve for X. So hence the term today, x-rays. So conventional x-rays, when we think about them, we think about checking for like broken bones or fractures, but um, x-rays can also be used uh, to diagnose uh, infection, such as pneumonia or even cancer. So the way that x-rays work is um, different structures and body tissues absorb different amounts of radiation. So like, ca like the calcium that's in your bone absorbs a lot of radiation, so these structures show up as white on an x-ray. Your soft tissues and fats don't absorb quite as much, they show up as gray, and then the air in your lungs um, shows up as, as black as it doesn't absorb anything. Mm -hmm. Another type of x-ray is known as our CT scan or our computed tomography, also known as a CAT scan. Mm -hmm. uh, this uses more radiation to get um, more angles of a picture um, so we can get more details um, of an image. And it actually is like, um, you know, cross-sectional. So you're kind of looking at an image instead of like head-on, like your conventional x-ray, like slices of the body looking, looking down. And this is, um, you know, really good for um, identifying also bro broken bones, um, infections, clots, or tumors. CT scans are also really good for seeing um, bleeding, blood vessels, um, and can also guide procedures like biopsies or even surgeries. There are some risks to x-rays as it exposes the patient to radiation, but the benefits far outweigh the risks when it can provide an accurate diagno diagnosis um, for your doctor and provider. Um, we do still, however, want to try to limit our exposure to radiation, especially in our pediatric population, because they are more susceptible um, to radiation than older people are. Yeah, and I think it's important as parents, as healthcare providers, um, that, uh, that we try to limit radiation exposure in children as much as possible, mm -hmm. um, which we do, we do try to advocate for our kids in the hospital to try to use the, the most minimally invasive test to get an accurate diagnosis. Exactly, and the least amount of radiation possible um, that can generate the best picture, and mm -hmm. we follow those guidelines here at the hospital. Some other things that you can do as a parent is keeping record of your child's x-rays. So mm -hmm. if it comes to the point where your child may need a second x-ray or other testing, um, you have access to that previous image that may help your, your doctor with a diagnosis as well. So as a parent, you should um, ask your healthcare provider about the benefits of a specific test, how it's gonna aid to help um, in the child's diagnosis. Um, and also inquire about if the facility where the test is being performed um, has radiation specifically dosed for children. Um, we do this here, here at the hospital. Um, we say often kids are not little adults. They need specialized, um, you know, specialized treatment in some circumstances. And then also asking um, if the child needs to be sedated for the procedure. In, in some cases, the kids need to hold still. Um, or if they need to have like a contrast agent that they, that they drink or is injected that helps us get a better picture. The next test that we're going to talk about is an MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. 
And this is a test um, that can get pictures from any angle of the body, and it's a really good image of the soft tissues, bones, can continue to look for tumors or cancer, um, and also the um, blood vessels as well. So unlike um, x-rays and CAT scans, um, MRIs do not actually use radiation. Um, it uses a very strong magnet that basically spins around the patient um, to get like a 360 um, view of whatever we're imaging. Um, MRIs um, can be very noisy, um, so and it's very important for our kids to hold still during these images so that we get an accurate um, reading. And this can be difficult sometimes in our younger children. It does require a little bit of sedation to get them to hold still. Mm -hmm. For our older children, though, um, that do still need to hold still, which can be uncomfortable because these tests can range from anywhere from 20 minutes um, to an hour and a half. So having anyone sit still for that long can be challenging. Um, but here at the hospital, we have our um, radiology child life specialists that are specifically um, specialists that help you know your child cope during this. Um, each of our rooms are also decorated in a certain theme, so it's visually pleasing to the child. Um, and a lot of times the kids can wear special headphones and listen to music or listen to movies during this exam as well. So despite the MRI giving one of the, the best images, there are still some risks. Um, Imagine you're in a room with a very large magnet and that magnet attracts anything that's magnetic, whether that be a small set of keys or cell phone or a very large oxygen tank. Uh, so very special screening needs to happen before anyone enters the field of the magnet to know that everyone in the room is, is safe. So another common test that we use often is um, called an ultrasound or a sonography. <coughs> Excuse me, so the way an ultrasound works is um, basically, um, it emits, we emit sound waves into the body and that sound reflects off certain surfaces and you get a real-time image of what is going on inside the body. Um, and it, it, it can be used to, to show movement, it can show movement of blood, it can show movement of an organ, or even as we're probably most familiar, like the movement of a baby while they're inside the womb. Mm -hmm. So when this test is performed, a gel um, is placed on the skin and a probe um, runs over the gel on, on the body. and and the sound waves absorb through that gel and like Court said, give us the real-time live image of, of what we're looking for. Um, these tests can also be used to look at abdominal structures like our intestines and everything as well. Yeah, and um, ultrasounds do not expose a patient to radiation. So I hope this topic gave you guys a little bit of insight on some of the tests that we are regularly performing here at the hospital. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's wrap it up. Next week is the letter Y, and Y is for? Um, we'll be talking about youth violence and bullying. Yeah. So as always, um, if you like this episode, give us a like, give us a share, leave us a comment below. You can email us at kidsa to z at dmc.org. Um, we love hearing from you. So <laughs> we will see you next week. Thanks for watching.